Welcome to another video. We have a functional equation that is very, very interesting and easy also, especially if you know what to do. But let's just read the question first. If a multiplied by f of x to the n plus f of negative x to the n is equal to bx, where a and b are constants, and um, n is an odd integer, and the absolute value of a is not equal to 1. What is the function? Now, every single line of information or piece of information provided is relevant to solving this functional equation. So, let's start with the most obvious. What does this mean? The absolute value of a not equal to 1 means that a is not 1 and a is not minus 1. So you have to leave out those two values as possible values of a. Okay, what else can we think of? n is an odd integer. How is that important? Well, whenever you raise something to an odd power, it retains the sign. If it was positive, it stays positive. If it was negative, x, the answer will become, will stay negative. So that's where that is relevant. I know that. What else is there? And a and b are constants. So I think we should do, because usually when you do functional equations, you would try to play with the numbers on the inside, like plugging in zero or one or something. Let's get into the video. Now, because of the nature of this, I think the fastest or the best thing you want to try first is to play with the signs because of the odd power. So what I'm going to say is, I'm going to write, let's do a times f of x to the n plus f of negative x to the n will be equal to b times x. So what I'm going to do next is, I just copied the question, but what I'm going to do next is, instead of plugging in x, I'm going to plug in negative x and see what happens. So, if I plug in, plug in, in negative x, I'm going to have a times f of this is going to be negative x raised to power n. It's going to be like this, negative x raised to power n plus f of, this is going to be negative, and then this will be negative, yeah, x raised to power n, ah, like this. Let's replace, like this, nice will be equal to b times negative x is going to be negative b x. a f of negative x raised to power n, because n is an odd integer, is just going to be negative x. Nothing has changed. Plus, negative x raised to power n it will be negative x, but if you multiply again by negative, it becomes f of positive x to the n. Oh, what is the n here? Come on. Yes, like that. To the n. Like that. Okay. And what is left? Equals negative bx. Okay. I can see positive bx up here. And I can see negative bx up here. And something about functional equations is once you see c zero, you get very excited. So I'm excited that these two can cancel out. So what I'm going to think of right now is... I don't care what's going on here, but I just want to add this to this so I can get zero on the right hand side. That means I'm adding all of these together. But if you pay close attention, you notice that f of x to the n is here and it's also here. So it means I'll be adding this to this and I'll be adding this to this. So this is what's gonna look, what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna have a f of x to the n 
and I'm going to be adding this to this, so I'll add it to this one, plus f of x to the n, then I'm going to add this, plus a times f of negative x to the n, oh, this one, <laughs> plus f of negative x to the n, nice, will be equal to this plus this, which is equal to zero. Now, just by writing out those lines, I can easily see that I can factor f of x to the n. So I have a, let's take out f of x to the n, f of x to the n, I'm going to be left with a plus 1 from these two. And I'll do the same thing, plus f of negative x to the n, a plus 1, ooh, equals 0. So this looks like you factored a quadratic. So I can take out a plus 1. So I have a plus 1 times f, nice, x to the n, plus f of negative x to the n, right there, equals zero. Now, this is a product of two terms. One of them must be zero, or both of them must be zeros. a plus one equals zero will mean a equals negative one. But we said the absolute value of a is not one. So we cannot, this cannot be zero because of that. This has got to be our zero. Okay, so we know that a plus 1 is not equal to 0. So we're going to go here and say that f of x to the n plus f of negative x to the n is equal to 0. Which means, maybe I should go this way. Now let's, let's divide the board this way. Which means that f of x to the n equals negative f negative x to the n, like that. So we move this over. Actually, I can move this minus sign because I can go replace this guy in the original equation. So I'm going to say that negative of this is this one. So if I go back to the original equation, Ta -da -da. So here I have a times f of x to the n plus, but instead of me adding this f of negative x to the n, I'm going to be adding this guy, which is minus, minus f of x to the n equals bx. Let me box this so you know that it's a different thing we're dealing with here. So what do I get here? Remember, I'm looking for f of x, almost there. I can factor this out so that I have f of x to the n times a minus 1 equals b x. So that f of x to the n equals b times x divided by a minus 1. Okay, so what do we need to do next? We're looking for f of x, not f of x to the n, so we need to do a u substitution. I'll do a t substitution. So here, I'll say, let t be equal to x to the n. So if I want to get x, I need to find x. It means that the nth root of t is equal to x. So I'm going to go here and say f of t. Let's go back and say f of t will be equal to ta -da -da, bx, b, what is x? Oh, x is the nth root of t divided by 
a minus 1. We're done. Now, I always get this comment when I do functional equations and I do this substitution at the end. See, I found f of t. Remember, a function is just about what does f do to what you give to it. So if you give it t, this is what it's going to do to it. If you give it y, this is what it's going to do to it. If you give it x, this is what it's going to do to it. Okay, that's why. It's just a placeholder. You can use any variable. So I can clearly say that f of x is equal to b times the nth root of x divided by a minus 1. This is the function we're looking for. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.